Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn all about third-party authentication and batch signatures. Before we use our batch signature function, let's do some preparation. Firstly, we can go to the Tools dropdown, mouse over Signature, and go to Digital IDs to check on our digital IDs and make sure that they're appropriate for what we're about to sign. For example, if we need to submit our documents to a municipality, we need to make sure that we're using third-party authentication. So I can select one of my IDs in this list, the first one, and I'm going to look for identifying information that allows me to say that this is third-party authentication. If we look at issued by, it just shows my name. And if we look at the start and expiration date, it shows about a 10-year gap. That is not typical of third-party authentication, and the issued by is the most important part that's the problem. If we click on the second digital ID in this list, we can then see that the issued by says IGC CA1. And this is representative of Identrust. This is a third-party authenticated digital ID that I got from Identrust. And the expiration date is three years, which is typically the longer duration. They can last for two or one year, depending on your agreement. So this is a third-party authenticated digital ID. I'm going to make sure that I use this one because I intend to submit this to a municipality. Now that we've checked that, we have one more bit of prep to do. The batch signature tool will not prompt us to save our file before signing because it's, saving, it's uh, signing multiple pages. When we sign individually, for example, once we click OK, then it's going to prompt us to save just like this. So what we need to do now is basically do a save as so that we retain this document as our working document and we make a copy of it. So we're going to go to the file dropdown, click on save as, and now I'm going to give this document a name. I'm going to call it batch digital signature DS, and then I'm just going to save it right there. Now, it looks like I've done this before in the past. I'm going to say yes, no problem. So this file is ready to go. It doesn't have a signature yet, but it's going to have one on every page right now. I'm going to click on the batch dropdown right here and click on sign and seal. And now let's look at the details in this dialog and let's look at how we can batch sign our files. Before we initiate the batch signature dialog, let's choose which pages are going to be signed in our PDF set. I have seven total pages, so I'm just going to click inside of this box once and then type 1-3. And now, if I had individual PDFs for each page, some municipalities require this, I can click on the Add dropdown on the bottom left, and I can essentially choose a folder with all of those PDFs labeled in their order. I could also choose folders and subfolders and individual files if I needed to. Now, if I have a certain configuration of certain PDFs that I want to sign regularly, then I can save that configuration and load it whenever I need to. So now we're going to click Next, and now the batch dialog will open. Let's start on the upper left side. We have the digital signatures portion, which allows us to choose between digital signature and document certification once again. However, it does not allow us to combine the two. This means that if I choose document certification, it will only certify in the background. You'll see that our digital signatures preview that was on the upper left side has disappeared completely. And when I choose digital signature once again, the signature is back. So document certification does not include the visual indicator when using it with the batch tool. I recommend signing an individual file, including document certification with your visual signature, and then using the batch tool subsequently to sign the other 99 pages, for example, with a regular digital signature. So if you want to include document certification, you could do it that way. But to me, it's not really necessary. Then you'll see similar settings that we saw when we were signing individual files, such as being able to choose between different digital IDs. So this one is my third party one. This is my second party one. I'll use the third party one. The reason section does not have an area to type into anymore. We can only click on the drop down and choose from the predefined reasons when using the batch signature tool. So if you do have legal text that you need to include with your signature, you can use location and contact info to type in the text. And when you're done, just make sure to edit the appearance of your signature. And then you can basically turn labels off so it doesn't show contact info and then the data. So that way you can use contact info's um, datum, so to speak, but not the contact info label itself. <laughs> now, this is my signature's appearance right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the name one to the seal one. So let's do that. Very good. And I'm going to make sure that my settings here look good. Perfect. It'll be font size 9, which fits really, really nice inside of here. Very good. 
So now I'm just going to check my placement. What I can do now is I can move my signature into position. You can see that if I move my mouse over the signature's preview itself, a little red box appears. And I recommend clicking on the center of this box so that you don't accidentally resize it without meaning to. Now, something important about resizing, speaking of which. When you resize the signature with manual placement, if you stretch it like this, then if you use the other placement option, which is signature field, initially it seems like either nothing happens, but of course we have to choose an existing signature field for this to work. So I'm gonna use signature field two. And now it puts the signature in here and everything seems great. We can actually use our signature fields, which have been sized up perfectly. They're roughly two inches by two inches in length and width. We can actually use them to place our seal and size it up properly to be compliant with our state statutes. And in Florida, we need to have our signatures at or our seals at one and seven eighths of an inch by one and seven eighths of an inch, which is almost two inches. Now, here's the issue. If we use signature field placement and we go to page two to make sure that our seal is there, there is no seal there. It's completely empty. And that's because you would need a signature field on every single page of the PDF set in order for this to work. So page three also doesn't have one. But page one does because I do have a signature field there. So instead, we don't need to use the signature field uh, and we don't need to create them on every single page. Instead, all we have to do is use that signature field as a placeholder just to make sure that our size is right, switch to manual placement, we can either leave signature two turned on or off, either way is fine. So I'm gonna switch back to manual placement. It seems to keep the same size seal, but in our testing, we've learned that if you manually resize your signature field and then use the signature option and then switch back, it initially keeps that same size, but when you actually use the batch signature tool, it'll increase or decrease the signature field size accordingly. So we definitely don't wanna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to adjust this and make it just a little bit bigger than my signature field to ensure that it's about two inches by two inches. That looks pretty good. And don't worry about the text itself. You'll see that as I zoom in and out, it gets smaller and smaller and larger and larger. So this preview is not really correct in regards to how my text is going to look when the signature is prepared. So you can see how large it looks right now in relation to the signature field as I zoom out all the way. Now, Moving on to the other sections of batch signing, before we actually finish signing itself, um, actually I'll do a couple things. Let me check my pages. Good, so now page two and page three are showing the seal in its spot in the correct size. So just make sure that you manually adjust its size and move its position, because if you leave that signature field option placed on, it may actually move the signature on the other pages without you realizing. So a couple of things in the background that need to be done in order for it to work well. Now, we do have an optional date section that we could turn on. This is a separate entity in the batch signature dialog, so I can actually click and hold and drag this date and move it anywhere I want. So I could utilize that if I wanted to. Whoops, I just moved my seal. Oh, well. And there is no undo button here, so you just have to basically make your changes and fix them if you make any mistakes. So I will do that by adjusting mine. And you can see that if you move your seal to the edge of the screen, it moves the screen for you. A bit of a quality of life feature that I find to be a little silly, but it does exist. So I'm just going to make that a bit bigger even. Beautiful. So here's our date. I could include it if I wanted to, but we already have the date automatically populating with our dynamic text in the signature itself. So we don't really need the date, but now you know that you can have it as a separate entity. We also have the seal option. This allows us to also include a separate entity. Here's one of my generic seals. And we could essentially use this with our signature. There was a bug that was occurring where the seals themselves were resizing and moving themselves. And they actually had this red box stretched to the left and to the right side. And it took up the entire screen and could not be moved properly because we cannot move these red boxes uh, outside of the screen itself. So people were actually creating empty appearances that had no visual data. So we turned off name, we turned off date, turned off everything, the graphic was set to none, so the signature itself was this invisible box. We placed the box, and then we used the seal, we put our stamp and or seal in the actual seal section, so we could choose it. For example, if I choose this one right here, oh, that's not the one. Um, let me try one of these other ones. Let me see if I have it. Nope, that's an approved stamp. Let's see if I have, there it is, this seal. Exactly. So we could use the stamp as a seal if we needed to and just place it there. So that one is a fixed seal. I believe this one. Yeah, this is very similar. So we could essentially put these on top of the signature 
And that way we would have the visual stamp and then the signature in the back. There are some municipalities that will not accept this. They actually require that you include the seal as part of your signature. And that bug was fixed a long time ago. So we don't need to include a seal in this instance. So we're just gonna turn it off. Okay, I'm just gonna make one final adjustment here just to make sure that my seal doesn't automatically resize itself. So I'm just going to move it and then I'm going to just make it even bigger, just a little bigger. Perfect, that should be really, really nice. I think we're ready to go. I'm just gonna check the second page, looking great. I think that we're ready to go, so we're gonna click OK. And now, I've already signed in recently with my third-party authentication, so it automatically just uh, did the signature for me. But it, typically, third-party authentication would pop up in your taskbar, and it would ask you for your password for your third-party signature. All right, and there it is. Now, my seal is here, and on the other pages, we have a seal here. And on the third page, we have a seal here. I did not sign the fourth, fifth, sixth page, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. Looks like I have a summary report. It's my seventh page, so I'll get rid of that right now. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's how we can use the batch signature tool. And those are the best practices that we've learned to use it properly. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on the batch signature tool and third-party authentication in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.